I'm your host, Maya Fisher-French. Now, today's topic is about immigration. And no, guys, this is not a response to the ESPM crisis. Um, it's because SARS has provided further clarity um, about tax residency. And for those South Africans who've been living abroad for a while, or for those planning on formal immigration, this is important. The value of this letter is set in the fact that it confirms in writing from SARS indefinite, it doesn't expire, that you are noted as a non-resident. So just to give a little bit of context, since March 2001, all South Africans have been legally required to declare and pay tax on their annual worldwide income, irrespective of where they live, okay? So that means even if you've been living overseas for a few years, you are still considered a resident for tax purposes, unless you can objectively prove to SARS your intention to remain outside the country permanently. So as you can imagine, this has created a great deal of confusion. I mean, like, what is objectively? How do you prove this? Um, and also, it's also led to, I think, a lack of understanding about what ceasing to be a tax resident means from a, as a tax consequence. So to unpack all of this, I'm joined by Martin Sadenhurt, who's an expatriate um, tax attorney from Tax Consulting South Africa. So welcome, Martin. Thank you so much, Maya. It's a pleasure to um, be here and a great opportunity. Thank you. Well, thank you for sharing your knowledge with, uh, with all my listeners. Um, I, I have, uh, let's just start off with, I just want to ask you this. I mean, obviously, you, you, this is something you're very involved in. You're a tax attorney, um, specifically around this issue. Has this tax mm. uncertainty been a major issue for, for South Africans living abroad? Yes, um, it has been. Um, the, the major issue as well is they're misinformed or they're not informed about their tax obligations from a South African perspective. A lot of um, these individuals think I'm leaving the country. I don't have to do anything for my tax. It's done. I'm, I'm, I don't see myself coming back. They don't take steps to make it formal or uh, formalize this with SARS. So it is an issue. And another issue that came about is these issuing of these non-resident confirmation letters. And the applying for it is it's not a simple process. So um, they having heard, there's a, a hurdle there to obtain these letters too. So major concern. Um, a lot of people are confused. Tax tax practitioners alike and with this new reset if I can say it like that so it is an issue and it's definitely something that we try to get the information out to keep people informed and um, educated about this topic. Yeah Martin I must just say my sister left uh, many uh, five six years ago she married an American she lives in America and she also just kind of left it all um, and I kept saying to you, you've got to do something about it you've got to do something about it and I do think she is now by, by the way getting it all sorted but there is this sort of sense I suppose that you kind of for a lot of people they don't know they go they're not sure if they're coming back if they do um, and apparently if you live in America they want all your tax right <laughs> they're very keen on having yeah. your tax so it isn't simple um, and and I, I, I sense the sense I get is every country in the world wants the taxes of the people in that country so there's going to be this war between all the different tax um you know the, the sort of tax zones and all the rest of it and that i think that's probably what leads to all this complicated you know law that's going on at the moment but let's get a little bit of um can you just give a little bit of background and where we currently stand i mean you've spoken now about this this new confirmation letter but sort of like yeah just give me a little bit of background to to it all and and what is it yeah, what is the current scenario Okay. okay, perfect. So I think the the important thing that we just need to give clarity on, and I think a lot of um, people aren't as certain about this, if you are seen as a tax resident, so you never went through the cessation pro um, process, you're not noted as a non-resident, you are taxed on your worldwide income from a South African perspective. Yes, there is some exemptions that you can apply for, um, but it's, it's, it's very important to note that I'm not just doing nothing. You need to do something. You even need to declare and claim the exemption, or you need to go through this formal declaration um, um, process, this formal cessation process. So in a lot of countries, there is double double um, double taxation agreements. Um, so that kind of helps finding the battle, who has taxing rights over, et cetera. But it's also not automatically applied. Um, the onus is always on the taxpayer to do so. So um, seizing through the ordinary resident test, that's the term that we call the financial immigration process, that has always been the, the legal way to note yourself as a non-resident. It's a formal process that you go through and you're declaring to SARS, 
objectively that you have no intention to come back to South Africa. So there has been recent changes in, I would say, the admin side of the process. Um, so last year, a lot of tax practitioners and, and taxpayers alike were kind of shocked when they saw there was a box on the e-file that you can tick to note yourself as a non-resident or et cetera, or just to confirm, actually, that was the purpose of this box. But that was no grayed out, and some of these boxes were not ticked, and it was basically a status reset. So even if you previously went through this process of financial immigration, you went through this formal process, you have been issued with an immigration tax compliance status, but there was still your system, your status is, didn't align on the system. And it would therefore be then required to make that change, to apply for that, to do this back-end administration process so that it aligns, to get you noted on the system as non-resident, and in the same breath or subsequently, then apply for this non-resident confirmation letter, which is worth its weight in gold. It confirms the cessation date, um, the date that you've been seen as a non-resident. So a very, uh, very important document to get, but it also doesn't come cheap. Um, worth this whole application process, there's a lot of stringent verifications that goes into this. SARS really wants to assess, even if you went through the process uh, in the past, that your intention still is to uh, reside abroad. So documentary evidence is required they do um they do a real deep dive in your personal circumstance to certain if you still have the obtention if that is still the case so that's what meant with this objectively you need to objectively prove that you have the intention to permit your side abroad if so yes you can obtain this non-resident confirmation letter and you can get this um, um, um your status correctly reflected but yeah that was that is the kind of the background and as a non-resident your only tax on your south african source income is also a misconception some people think if i go through this financial immigration process but i'm still getting income in south africa i'm not taxed on it which is very un, um, untrue it's still sourced so rental income out of properties that you still may have um, South African fixed assets that you sell here, that's also taxed from a oh, South wait. African perspective. Everything what? offshore is non-taxable. What? what? <laughs> I didn't realize that. So, so you're telling me, okay, so so just to, to put a put a put a pause there, because this is gonna bring my head in. So if you're now, let's say you haven't got this letter, and you're living mm -hmm. abroad, all of your global assets can be taxed in South Africa. And we're talking capital gains, tax, dividend tax, income. If you're earning income in the US, that technically could be taxed here. If mm -hmm. now you've formally immigrated, you've got this golden letter, as you call it, yeah. you now live abroad, but you've kept a rental property in South Africa and you're renting that out. SARS is saying, uh-uh, that you've got to do a tax return on that. But then what yes. if I'm living in America, as an example, where they think everything belongs to them, is that where the double taxation now must come in? I mean, this must be doing, I mean, this is not easy. Sorry, but it's not easy. <laughs> no, it, it, it's not. Um, expatriate tax is such a complex, because we're, we're only across borders too. So there is double taxation agreements in most of the countries of court. Um, so they, the, 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 the goal of these agreements or these treaties is to avoid or minimize double taxation where applicable. So if you have a South African property that is sourced in South Africa, if you generate income from that, that's South African sourced income. So international tax law source and in terms of the OECD principle source, if it's sourced in the country, they have tax rights over it. That's where you will may find some relief in foreign tax credits on the US side or through applying the DTA, um, depending on the provisions there, um, there might be some relief there. Um, so it's not necessary everything's going to be taxed etc there is treaties and there is legislation to provide some relief um it, it's it's just a good practice principle but in effect if it's in south africa still taxed here if you are a tax resident of another country such as the us or the uk they though in most countries have a resident based system so worldwide taxation applied there might be some double taxation there, but there is foreign tax credits that you can apply to, et cetera. So South Africa has a kind of a high tax rate. So the foreign tax mechanisms in other countries can can provide uh, require relief. It just so, needs so just to take a little step again, a step back, because now I still want to clarify this. So if you know this this worldwide tax residency thing, right? So if I'm in South Africa, if I'm not living in South Africa, but I'm still a tax resident here, but I've got a rental property in America, as an example. Then America is going to say that that rental income belongs to them because it's source. But what does the South African authority say? Do they say, but you're a tax resident here, so we also want it? <gasps> yes, These they have tax rights. Sorry, but really, they're just <laughs> taking our money. 
uh, yeah, uh, technically, um, yes, they have tax rights over that income. There is mechanisms to um, minimize the tax risk or the tax um, um, obligation, but in essence, as a tax reason, and that's why it's very important for people to understand this. Uh, people, a lot of people leave and they start buying assets abroad, etc., and they never go through this process of formalizing a non-resident. So, if intention is to permanently reside there, I see no reason not to become a non-resident. Uh, go through this process it might take a little bit while it is a verification that you need to go through this orders that we uh, or the person that does this for you needs to attend to but go through this process it's certainly worthwhile um it's a very important step <laughs> um, and, and i want to ask you it, yeah so i want to ask i want to get to i want to get to, to, get to yeah. asking you like how do you prove that you're no longer a tax resident but before i get there i want to just talk about this the importance of this letter because that it is important in terms of your mm. of accessing your pension all of that so so what can you do yeah. what do you need that letter for in terms of your south yes. african assets so that letter just from it would be your first line of defense for any queries or audits in the future from a taxation perspective. If someone has any queries about your residency status, you have the letter confirming from South African um, from SARS that you confirm that you're non-resident. Also, policyholders, you know, there's a free year um, lockup rule, um, so you need to prove that you're non-resident for three years before you can withdraw um, your retirement annuities and and preservation funds so you can provide that letter to your policyholder um as well um to foreign taxpayers if there's any question about tax residency in another country that is a confirmation thereof but it the worth the 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 the, the value of this letter is set in the fact that it confirms in writing from SARS indefinite it doesn't expire that you honor it as a non-resident but to banks to transfer money abroad um, inheritance perspective policy encashments that's where practically this letter comes into play too because it, it it has become a requirement for these type of um, transactions to take place so are you seeing that you spoke a little bit earlier about that pin or making sure that on the on the SARS uh, e-filing it, it's it's clicked if you've got the letter would you assume then that you're on the system and it's all done or do you still go on to your e-filing and make sure that it is is reflected as such if if you so um the old i'm going to call it the old process so the old process there was no indefinite confirmation this non-resident letter did not um, exist mm. if i can say it like it was not issued you were issued with an immigration tax compliance status but at that stage that was the formal confirmation that you are a non-resident so the reset that happened with the box stick etc that occurred last year in the filing season um what that means is even though you went through this process, the admin side or on the SARS system, it does not align. Um, there is a, I can say, a miscommunication there. So that box, in if it's grayed out and it's ticked and you're noted as a resident, a non-resident on the system, perfect, you're good to go. Maybe apply just that for that later to get that con con um, concrete proof. If that doesn't reflect on the system, go and do this back-end administration process. Yes, there might be verifications request. Um, in this regard, but going through that process, then apply for the letter, get everything sorted, get everything cleaned out, okay. uh, or not cleaned out, but uh, just clear, make it clear that you just are non-resident. Go um, double check everything because this really, really matters. And and how yeah. do you prove? This is it. So I was reading it was like, um, it, you know, it's sort of like um, when when you try and understand how do you how how are you deemed a non-tax resident? How do you prove to SARS that you're not? coming back what are they looking for you said it's quite stringent so what are they looking for so they really go into your personal circumstances so objectively viewed uh, the what's me what's meant by this is if i was the person looking at your situation from the outside um and i look at that and i say okay no this person has a visa there they can work and live abroad that they maybe have permanent residence there or citizenship they move everything abroad that is type of factors that are considered where your family are is it your spouse going with you um it's actually a requirement that your spouse goes through this process with you too um but that's the type of facts that they look after so do you have the right to live or work work abroad where's your family where's your social and economic interests and you need to get the documentary evidence to um, substantiate that that's the type of queries that we get also time spent in south africa remember there's two residency tests we have the ordinary resident test so this is the first primary test that needs to be applied objectively viewed what is your intention if you see south africa as your deemed home and you will after all your wanderings come back to south africa you don't have the intention to permanently reside abroad if that's not the case 
um, then you do qualify and go can go through this process of cessation. But time spent in South Africa will then be looked um, at because if you pass the physical presence test, then there's a risk that your residency will then be reverted. So time spent in South Africa is also taken into account. Um, so travel uh, travel um, dates and travel diaries and they tracking precisely exact e e entries into Oatombo o o and entries out and they're asking the, the taxpayers what is the reasons for these visits. Um, we even had um, uh, or, uh, what we've seen is sharp inquiries into employment caps. Um, so they've noted that there were, the person resided from a certain um, um, offer of employment in South Africa. They, their residency ceased the date that they applied for cessation is three years later. Why did not that they not declare the foreign income there? Um, so really in depth um, um, inquiries in that process. So it is important to ensure that objectively viewed, yes, everything is in your favor. I always explain it if we're looking at the Lady of Justice. You know the two scales. You need to get everything to strengthen your case. Mm -hmm. um, so everything needs to align in that regard. And that, that would then be a good case to seize residency. But yeah, sharp inquiries, they look at everything. Uh, it's, they it's probably really check your Facebook into... page as well. <laughs> <laughs> probably like checking yeah, on your maybe. social media. No doubt. Social no media, doubt. the time spent, uh, they, yeah, yeah. yeah, wealth tracking. There's so many sources really en enhance the, um, the, the data collection that they are able to do. And it and extends across borders too. We have that global reporting standard. That a lot of people are not aware about, but there is financial institutions across the world that needs to report to tax jurisdictions, and we need to report to them to avoid any tax fraud and invasion. So, it, it, the the risk of just hiding your head in the sand or keep having that approach, it's it's really ill advisable. Um, it's always best just to get everything in order, get compliant, make sure that your your case is strong, and then go through this process. Um, you know, Martin, I think I think that's true about everything, you know, about all our lives. Yeah. Our admin, we and we're I mean, I'm hate admin as, just as much as the next person, but that's the thing that catches you out <laughs> ultimately is get, okay. get it done. Because flip, if you yeah. leave it, it just the mess gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, one of the things I also thought we should cover, and this is something that a lot of South Africans don't realize, especially ones who perhaps um, have been out the country for a while and or maybe want to even backdate their um date of secession. Mm -hmm is there is a massive capital gains trigger when you cease residency. So maybe also just take us through through that. Okay, perfect. So I don't want to bore you with that exact, but it's Section 9H of the Income Tax Act. So that's the deemed disposal, um, um, deemed disposal tax um, provision. So uh, when you cease to be a resident, so when you become from a non-resident to a, uh, from a tax resident to a non-resident, you go through what we call an exit tax or a deemed disposal. So they deem your assets disposed of on the day before you are seen as a non-resident. So that day is then taken to, into account. So it extends to shares worldwide, it, it, offshore investments, et cetera, unit trusts, crypto, platinum and gold coin, foreign property too. Um, South African property is not included in this deemed disposal. Um, but they deem the disposal. So it is like a capital gains tax. It's like you sold it. Um, and it's treated exactly the same. So if you had a large portfolio and there was a, a massive growth on all those assets and you go through this cessation process, there might be a massive tax implication. Remember, you're not actually disposing the, the, the assets. So there's no, from a, cash flow. From a liquid perspective, yeah. yeah, cash flow. From a cash flow perspective, mm -hmm. you need to take that into account as something that needs to be planned for. And it also needs to be declared to SARS when you cease to be a resident in that year of assessment that needs to be declared um, if there was a capital gain because there's a tax implication regard, um, in that regard. Um, so it's very important to take note of this. And even with a back in the process, it's, it's completely possible to do this and go back to your application, but we, there needs to be some remedial steps if that was not declared. And a lot of people, uh, and that's something that you hear in the market and in the consultation is, no, I'm a, I'm non, I'm a non-resident. I've, I've gone through this process i've informed sars and then okay but did you go through this deemed disposal um um tax the section did you comply with section 9h and they're like i don't know what you mean <laughs> and this is where it comes into so it's very important to tick all the boxes if i can say it like that when you go through the cessation to, to, to go to act in accordance with all the provisions that that is um aligned with the whole cessation process it is deemed disposal tax is a big thing and it's something that can be planned for especially for people moving abroad now, 
um, take that into account, maybe have an assessment of that, see what the tax implication might be if we if you see the reason today or in the next month or two. So really, yeah, it's a, it's a big one and yeah, it catches, yeah. I think it catches a lot of people unawares, but what I didn't know, you said South African property isn't, doesn't form part of no. that. So even if you've got no. investment property in, property in South Africa. No, it's, it's, it's a, a immovable property. So it's, it's, it's a fixed um, asset. Okay. So it, when you dispose of the property, then an actual disposal event will occur. And then if there's a capital gains tax applicable, that, that will then um, incur a liability. Okay. But it doesn't go through the deemed disposal tax. And then that's also people think I need to sell everything before I go through the cessation process. So I need to dispose of my house, even if it's making money through a rental agreement and still makes sense. You don't have to do that. It's not an asset test. Okay. Um, but yeah, um, it's Does excluded this relates completely. more to shares and investments than immovable property. Yes. Okay. That, yes. Well, look, I mean, that's something because a lot for a lot of people, their main their house, their property is. So, of course, a lot yes. of people, if they are formally immigrated, would be selling their home anyway. Um, but if they've got yeah. investment properties, they may want to hold on to those. So I think that that's anyway yeah. that's worth knowing. Just as one little, because yeah. I must tell you, Martin, and, and I wanted to, to end up asking you this question because I, you know, I have seen the consequences of of people not getting expert advice. And when I say not getting expert advice, even just normal your normal accountants don't know this stuff. I mean, this stuff is complicated. I am on the mailing list of, um, uh, you know, the, the Tax Consulting South Africa. So I get every time I, I, I get these updates and my head is when my sister contacted and when she contacted me because she decided that she was going to do this, I said, to, I cannot. She said, Maya, what should I do? I said, I don't know. I said, go get, go get an expert. Um, and because you do need an expert, really, when you start listening to this, it's not, I, I do sometimes think these laws are here to make uh, people like Martin a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but tax, you know the tax experts you know it makes experts money because it is complicated but what would somebody and i know maybe this is how long is a piece of string but what could somebody expect to pay an expert and a proper expert not just an accountant to actually wind this up properly and get that letter and make sure your taxes are in order you know all the rest yeah, so from an advice perspective how we how we conduct our services we start with the initial free consultation to look at the circumstances and that's where we also provide advice in terms of what would the best route for you be so there's no cost associated with actually getting expert advice um, the process going through this uh, process um, as well cost is really dependent on the circumstances and the complexity and the uh, work that the professional hours that is required on these type of applications so giving a lump sum i don't think it would be uh, or uh, giving a range of cost that it would um, it would not be fair to um, to say that, but it, 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 it it's it's the thing is I'm just going to say it it is a long process, three to eight months. So professional hours taken into that account, it can be for some people it can be seen as a, a, a expensive um, procedure that they think that it, they don't have to do, which is not the case. If I always if I consult and I say, listen, it might be it might be a, a, a fee that you need to pay for this, but think of the double taxation risk that you're on, or the taxes that you need to pay to South Africa from or to SARS um, if you do not go through this process. So it's 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 really hard for me to give an exact um, cost, but it it, it, it ranges. Mm. It's also dependent on circumstances. But free, ad yeah. free advice is there. <laughs> so, so, so I do think well there's free advice a free advice can become very expensive and um also I mean I know what my sister paid in the end and and I think it would have been it was cheaper than taking pets offshore so <laughs> when one yeah. one can balance these things like I just leave yeah. it behind um and rather sort out your tax so yeah <laughs> that's, yeah that's it's definitely cheaper fun. than the, all the flight tickets and everything that you need to go to do with the immigration process no certainly <laughs> absolutely well Martin thank you and and I I hope those people listening it, it it's helped them uh for me it's kind of shocked me even more because there's still stuff i learned uh chatting to you and i thought i knew some stuff but i definitely don't know it all um and thank you for for your time and um yeah your expertise thank you so much my it was really a pleasure being um yeah and talking about this stuff i i like talking about tax it's a weird thing but you know it's been a pleasure <laughs>